Hello there, my name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee, so I am real. And the camera's come forward because I thought it would be better for you, but then I feel like I'm just disembodied hands. Okay, so we're going to make a little baby outfit out of a pillowcase. Now, it is kind of a pillowcase dress because we're going to go with the same style. So we're going to go with that nice sort of plain rectangle. I'm also going to make some little pantaloon, little bottom trousers for little nappy bottoms. Um, this is just great. <laughs> I love babies. I'm a bit of a soft touch. But the, I'm going to put shoulders on rather than straps for comfort. And I'm going to do some floofy sleeves. Now these are not full sleeves. They're just little puffs that go over the top of the shoulders. So we've got a bit of sun protection, although obviously we're wearing sun cream. Um, but it's um, a lot easier to sew than sleeves, uh, especially with a design that you are making yourself. So, um, bits of fabric I need. I need two kind of rectangles, sort of triangly things. Little puffy sleeves, and then we're going to come back and do the little pantaloons later. So, first steps first. I'm using a pillowcase and I quite like the idea of using one of these contrasting ones because if you do buy contrasting fabric it can work out quite expensive because you've got to buy two different types of fabric and rather than go long ways what I'm probably going to do is cut it and cut this up and then make the dress out of one and then make the little pantaloomy uh, bloomers um, out of the other. Um, this is just personal choice, obviously. Uh, I could use two pillowcases and do it all re reversible or something. So, uh, let me get these pattern cut out and made, and of course I'll put a copy up on Facebook for you. Thank you. <coughs> so, hello, welcome back. Um, okay, well I've got my pattern drawn, and I've got my pieces cut out, and I, I drawed them and then I went, okay, we're just going to have to make that a bit smaller. So I will copy the patterns onto the back of this and um, yeah, and then that's what will go up. And um, when I was standing at the door, I thought that my bottoms looked like little feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her a look first. Okay. Yeah, because they're not the feet. Okay. Lovely. I'm going to keep my scraps because if I can use my scraps, I'm going to use my scraps, aren't I? No, I'm not. I'm not averse to that. And I did say I would start with the top, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> okay so what I'm going to do is, yeah, do the main body. Do I do the main body or do I not? Yes. Okay, so there's my main dress. I suppose I could cut out one of these just to be a bit more lower at the front. And I think I'll do that. And I've just cut out an extra triangle. Now I need to hem this and I need to sew them together. Now I haven't really decided how best to do that. I think it'll probably be best if I use French seams because it, um, I don't want it to be scratchy at all. So I'm going to put the right side to the right side and I'm literally going to go round the outside of this. So I'll just start at the bottom and then work my way up. Okay. And it is so nice to sew cotton. Like, I know most of the clothes we wear nowadays, uh, me especially, is uh, I just wear sort of t-shirt material and even my um, suits we've got given them, it's, it's just a real pleasure just to sew cotton. Lovely, so I've gone up the outside, I'm just lining up the shoulder and I'm going to go straight on to that. Now, I'm using a small stitch. If I was using a large stitch, then maybe this wouldn't be a good idea because I could accidentally pull them out. Um, then 
then I would have to stop the machine, maybe do a bit of reversing, and um, lovely. So going as close to the edge as I'm comfortable with, and then I'm just coming down the long side now, which isn't cut quite as well. Now I opted to use the side with the envelope which was slightly longer. Um, I don't know if there's any better way for me to explain in that. The, the cut of the pillowcase was a case of, yeah, and then there's um, two, two rectangles and uh, an envelope to hold it together. So I'm going to turn it inside out. Now it's a nice idea just to trim those hems so you can get them nice and even and close if you're not happy with them because you know we're losing centimetres here we're losing probably about three quarters of an inch by doing it this way rather than just sewing it and then going over it with a zigzag but because this is you know a dress for a hot day then yeah it's going to be scratchy and that's the last thing I want so Lovely, just turning it around here. And then taking this, making sure you're pushing it home. They're nice flat seams, so they're nice and easy to do. And if you want to do reverse stitch, you can do. And the nice way about going straight on to the next seam is that you're, you save so much cotton and that means you save so much bobbin turning and um, you save so much time. So, I'm just going on to the last one now. Now for hemming the bottom and the top, um, obviously you could use bias binding or you could fold around the hem. Um, this stuff will be really easy just to do a little fold type hem because you can can't cut the thread you can run your fingers along that and then you'll have a crease there and that'll stay long enough for you to sew but I think what I'm going to do is because I'm a huge fan of it as well is uh, running through with another foot now I call this a looper foot, it is, it's a hemming foot um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lop those corners off because they're the, the fan bits. So, lovely. Okay, so I'm going to get that on the machine, literally it's a hemming foot, it just sort of twirls it around and it makes the hem quite light and in this case as well it uses very little fabric to do the hem so we then have the advantage of we're not doing too much wastage and we're working with a limited amount of cloth so a couple of stitches just to get it all joined in um, and then I'm going to turn it And then it just picks it up and rolls it. It's very, very simple. And um, it leaves everything quite nice and light. So. Now I'm going to go over this, but what I'll probably do is just sew it. Um, so I don't want it to get jammed up. Uh, this is the hem, so we're doing quite a lot of um, bits of fabric. But as long as there's a couple of good stitches in there, it will stay. Oh, well, it looked like it was going so well, wasn't it? So, that's the loopy foot. Now, let's decide um, how we're going to go about these corners of the sleeve so it's really quite a big dress um, bigger than I thought it would end up but then we want it as comfortable as possible don't we 
So I'm going to use the loop of foot all around the neckline as well and around the bottom of the sleeves. I am going to put those somewhere safe because it would be terrible if I um, cut a bit of something that I was going to use. And I think I only have enough to do these seams in red or to do them in the contrasting white one just to have a little extra colour. Now, I know what I really need is two bits that big and I don't have it, or maybe, okay, it's going to be only just, okay. So I've got a bit of sewing to do um, and then I'll come back to you, alright. Okay, so yeah, I'm back. Um, yeah, okay, I left you at the start of the bottom of the hem. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've sewn round and I'm just going to show you how to go over a hem uh, and I'm going to tell you why. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing it down with my finger. I'm just coming up to it. I'm untucking it from the foot and I'm going to give it a couple of stitches. Now it will go over a certain amount of hem, um, it just won't go over a lot of hem and then I'm going to pick it up again as soon as I can and you know when we started we did a few stitches on the flat before we, we got going, I'm going to now go over those few stitches so that it's all covered, it's just, it's so much easier. So. If you want to go over the hem, so you're coming along on your loop of foot and you're looping away and then you come over to a great big fold of a hem, you can literally get so much cloth wound up in here that the only thing you can do is take the whole needle out and the foot and then get somebody who's quite good at knots and puzzles and then to unpick it all for you so and you'll end up with a hole in the hem as well so I'm going to put that there because I'm going to use it again and um, I'm going back to my normal foot do you know the amount of times I've been sewing and I haven't changed back to my normal foot because you can just pull the thread through okay so you know we have the basis of a dress really um, it's not very pretty, obviously, and um, yeah, so there we are, you know, it needs trimming, of course, because I'm not very good at that. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, whiz it round to the front, and I think I'm going to just put a couple of lines of stitches in. Now, uh, this is purely decoration. There's no reason for it at all. So I'm going to find the middle and I'm literally just going to go down and put a couple of stitches. And then I'm going to pick the needle up, cut the thread. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to do another line as well on either side. So I've just got three little lines of stitches and I think that'll just, just help it. And if I put the other line equal distance and I keep these two lines up, then I'll be able to see when to stop. So Now of course you can do this with pins. And of course there are specialist piping feet as well. I know. Yes, I don't have one. So, I think that just makes all the difference having three little lines there. Of course there's loads of excess thread. And I did make, they're so tiny, but I did make little poofy bits. So I'm going to tidy them up actually, because uh, when I came off the seam, um, it was too bumpy and um, I um, didn't sew them very well.
so yeah, that's just me. It just didn't look very tidy, so. Now, that's all I've got, I know. But I'm sure just having that little bit will make the difference. So I'm going to get the corner of my sleeve. And I'm going to put right side to right side. I'm going to hold it in the middle. And I'm literally going to sew. And then I'm going to sew over cross stitch. Now, because I'm sewing on top, it'll give that little lift. And because... I'm sewing on top as well it won't be too itchy so because that was the whole thing about doing the French seams and not doing the now I'm not putting any gather in this because I don't think I need to but obviously there's a lot to be said for it so I know it looks so tidy I sh so untidy I should have I should have spent 10 seconds and gone over so I'm just putting it to a zigzag stitch, I'm not adjusting it, and then I'm literally just going over the seam just to keep it from falling apart. And this is the underside of the little fake sleeve. So let's get that out to the top and it should fall through. So then that will just go there and it will just lighten it up slightly. Okay. Now if I was um, going to do a bit more, uh, a, a slightly smaller size, then maybe I could have saved a bit more material. But I know, you know, I'm a big fan of sewing what I'm given it. So I'm making sure that I've lined up with the sleeves. I'm just turning it to there. Pulling this all through, and then I'm just lining it up with the previous sleeve. I get to the point of the corner, turning it all around, making sure that nothing's caught up on the bottom. And I know whilst the needle was down, I'm so naughty, but you should always lift the needle when you're changing stitches. It does sort of shunt it around there, and it can end up with a broken needle or a bent needle which makes sewing quite strange. So yes, all right, I have got a good 10 minute work to do in just doing all these seams and cutting these loose ends. Because um, it's a good idea to keep on top of it because then it doesn't jam up your machine. So there we are, I know. And then we can move on to the bloomers. <laughs> you can tell, can't you? I'm excited about this. Now, if you've got a pair of um, suitable trousers, children's trousers or anything, do take a, a look. It is amazing how big the bottom of the fabric is because of the nappy. You know, it, it, they're just huge. And anyone that's got children of sort of age three or four, you know that these first shorts and everything you can then put on quite an older child because of uh, especially with boys you can put their shorts back on so when they're till about the age of eight because of they're so big so yes big 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 bottoms I know terrible thing to say lovely so it is a simple case of you get one of these pieces and then you sew up the legs on both of them, or on the piece, and then you get both of the legs and then you sew the body together. So let's just do that. I'm going to literally stick with the, the French seams because, you know, this is the most ideal piece of clothing to wear in when it's really hot because of... Um, it's so breathable. So lovely. That's one leg. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Okay, what I'm going to do, instead of worrying, I'm just going to literally show you 
what a traditional seam would be. So I've done the main of straight stitches and then I've done a line of zigzags and that will be enough you know that will be enough to hold it together and then from the other side it looks completely normal what I was hoping to do is sew it on the right side and then turn it inside out with just a plain line of stitch And what I'm going to do now is it's probably best to do all your underside, so all the back stitches, and then do all the front stitches. But because I was chatting, I um, got that slightly wrong. So what I'm going to do is make them the same rather than unpick it. Lovely. So it's a matter of flaring this out and flaring the other one out and sewing together and we're going to do that lovely French seam again so we're going to have right sides facing out and we are going to just get it started and then pick it up, lay it down run along for a bit pick it up, lay it down. I'm going to pay particular attention because I do want the seams to join at the same point. It just looks so much better. Lovely. Uh, I'm just coming up to the seam now so I'm going to leave the needle down and obviously as I'm changing direction majorly I am going to take time to make sure that I'm not going down the leg or something because trust me I've done it before. I've just suddenly scoot it off down the leg rather than take up so that's that I know it's it's all horrid can't do it. <laughs> so welcome back. Sorry I can't thread needles and do bobbins or anything on camera. So I've switched it off. I know. <laughs> Did a couple of other jobs as well. So yes, <laughs> straight line stitching. I don't think you really needed to see that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this slightly because there's quite a lot of cloth there um, and um, I want to keep it tidy and obviously that's one of the places that it would rub, wouldn't it? So I'm just trimming away. Lovely and back the other way and then I'm going to seal the hem in and you can see the difference. So it's not much more work to actually just do it twice rather than do the zigzag. Oopsie, <laughs> a bit keen there wasn't I? <laughs> so then again we've got to make sure that we're just sewing the bits we want to sew. When we get to the point of uh, the bottom. everything out of the way that we don't want and then a couple of stitches it's going to be a bit complainy over the seams but that's fine so that's done and we have the basic shape now for the top 
we need it slightly elasticated, just very loose elastic, just to hold it in place. So I am going to turn it the right way around again. Shake it out. And I am going to fold it once, twice, and I am going to put some elastic through as well. Now it's a very good idea to get a safety pin and um, seal off this piece of elastic because you don't want to go to all that trouble and then pull it all the way through. So. Yes, this is my old pen pot that I'm digging in. Look at the state of me, I tell you. Yes, I wipe them on my trousers. Yes, it is pens in the bottom. I, I'd never be able to, to use it as a mug again. So, But I'm well aware that I throw in all my broken needles in there, so uh, I don't put them in the bag and then go, oh, I just need a piece of cotton. And then... Um, stab myself because that would be terrible now okay i've got to recommend this if your hands are this state then do wash them because you wouldn't want to mark the fabric and um, it would be very easy to do that so i've got everything folded and i can feel this ridge of elastic just under my fingers and what I'm going to do is every time I stop and I do my adjusting, I'm going to make sure that it's in the right place. Now I've left it out sort of halfway through, not near any seams or anything different. Um, this is just the elastic I'm talking about. This is just so that I can... Um, when I finish it off, I don't have any place to worry. There we are. Now I've got to make sure that I keep enough elastic out to come to the end. Because to go to all that trouble and then um, to lose it would be a bit tragic. So I'm going to knot it now. I'm going to do a re re reef knot. And there's two ways to do it. You can either leave the elastic out and use a bit more and then you can adjust it when you come to the end or you can just take off probably a third of the garment just to do with the elastic. It, but then it depends how stretchy your elastic is and how confident you are. So if I had more elastic, what I would have done is I would have kept enough out and then I would have adjusted it afterwards but I had so again elastic is under my thumbnail and I am just literally sewing along and then a couple of reverse stitches I'm going over the same line of stitches anyway, so it should be fine. And there we are. So just a little bit of elastic, not too much. You know, you don't want to cut off circulation or anything. And um, then we are going to go back onto the loop of foot. I'm going to do a line of loopy footy stuff here, just to hold the trousers in. we saw me do that on the other bit and um, when I come to the seams I'm going to make sure that all these little bits of thread aren't around and I can even cut them up at a little bit of an angle so that I don't cut a little bit of triangle off the seam so I don't do that jammy foot thing. Okay, I'm just going to do this leg and then I'm going to do the next step. Yeah, keep 
going round. Hello there. So I'm not quite sure why we cut off so quickly. Um, either the um, battery was fat or the memory card was full. So a piece of elastic and the trousers. Now ideally you would like the trousers elastic to be the size of the leg. Okay. It, you know, it's a fashion thing. It's not supposed to, it serves no purpose. But um, I'm using what I've got again. So. Now I'm putting the elastic tight and making sure that the hem is even. Now I would say that the needle, when it lands, if it lands on the elastic, it kind of jumps. So you're not going to get the tidiest of so, but from the other side. But it is it is such a, a lovely effect. So, and in fact, when I when I do ruffles now, I don't gather. I um, I just use the elastic. So much easier. So every step I'm taking, I'm making sure that I haven't got the other side caught up. Very easy to do. And. Um, if you do feel like it's going to be too tight, well, just leave a good gap. You know, that's that's fine. So I'm going to come along here and I'm going to do just a couple of reverse stitches just to keep it all tidy. And then that is the last step done. Whilst the camera was off, I did do the loopy foot thing on both of the both of the legs. So I know, but see how we're doing. So I have the pattern here, I've copied it out. Now it's not going to be clear because we can see the, the dress from the other side but the black line is the body and I literally all I did was trace around it and then this lime green line is the fold of the leg. So yes, I'm going to need more big 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 bottom thing. Yes, that's, it's just deceptive how much material you're going to need for that bit of the sew. So, we have everything we need, really. Um, I must admit, I chose not to um, do any extra fabric. Um, this is just because we're not all spoiled with fabric shops on the corner anymore. Most of us have to sort of plan ahead and and go to uh, uh, like a, a different town. It's not even a big town, we have to just go to a different town and then we can um, find a suitable fabric shop. So there we are, my little pillowcase dress with bloomers. I know, I think it's lovely. Um, yeah, okay, hope you've enjoyed the video. Sorry it's been a bit long. Um, I talk a lot. And I hope you've got all the information you need. Alright, thank you so much for watching.